your eye! What's up, guys? It's me, it's me. It's that E-R-I-C. I am the people's co-host, Eric Barnes. This is Roz Ebar. So let's get it started. Now, I haven't watched a full episode of Raw since No Mercy. Uh, but with this being Raw 25 and all the names that were mentioned, I was actually pretty hyped for it. Um, so, before I get started, I just want to say, as far as the whole Barclays Center slash Manhattan Center 2 building thing, I think that was very ill-advised. Uh, no matter which building people were in, they're going to feel slighted in some way. Uh, I understand the nostalgia factor that played into it, but still, a bad decision in my opinion. Alright, so as for the show itself, uh, I don't think it could have started out any better. Uh, Stephanie and Shane brought out Vince and gave him a plaque for all his hard work over the years. Uh, I thought that this was just hilarious because Vince went from being worshipped by the crowd to turning back into Mr. McMahon and just cutting a hilarious heel promo, uh, which I think we all knew was going to lead to Austin coming out. Uh, honestly, uh, I got goosebumps when his music hit and he started coming out. Uh, and he ended up doing what he does best, which is drinking beer and stunning McMahons. Uh, sadly, Stephanie left the ring early because I guess stunning girls isn't PG anymore. Or never was PG, I guess. Uh, regardless of that, this entire segment was great and the perfect way to kick off Raw 25. So, next we got an eight-woman tag team match that, to me, was pretty forgettable, save for the fact that Asuka started throwing her teammates out of the ring after it was over. Uh, personally, I'd love to see her win the Women's Royal Rumble, although there are a lot of rumors about Ronda Rousey winning, which just seems like a horrible idea to me. Uh, I mean, sure, it would look great on a WrestleMania marquee, but, you know, it would look better. Two female superstars that work year-round. Uh, remember when WrestleMania showcased current talent and wasn't only about pulling in part-timers? Yeah, I know, Ma. So next, The Undertaker returned to Raw at the Manhattan Center. Uh, honestly, it was great to see Taker again, and you could tell that he was a bit emotional. Uh, but the promo that he cut was so cryptic. I honestly couldn't tell if he was going to be coming back for another match, or if he was trying to say goodbye. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, great to see Taker again, but a very strange and confusing segment for me. Alright, so, after we saw a bunch of general managers come out and stand on the stage, we got a match between Miz and Roman Reigns for the Intercontinental Championship. Thought it was a great match overall, thought it had a perfect outcome. The Miz Raj got sent to the back near the end of the match, so not only did Miz win back the Intercontinental Championship, he did it on his own in the end, even though Roman did hit that exposed turnbuckle. Um, enjoyable match, and good to see Miz get his hands back on the IC belt. And next we got the return of the Peep Show. Uh, Christian has been one of my favorites for a long time, so it was definitely good to see him, although he may as well have not been there after introducing his guests, Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan. Uh, it was hilarious. People were booing the hell out of Jordan, but honestly, I think he's kind of starting to like it. Uh, so Sheamus and Cesaro made their way out, and after a little back and forth, uh, Seth Rollins ended up kneeing Jordan in the face, which was pretty awesome as well. I mean, this face right here says it all. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly this is all leading up to, but I guess I'm a, along for the ride for now. So then we had what was one of the biggest disappointments of the night for me. Uh, after all that's been going on between Woken, Matt Hardy, and Bray Wyatt, they let them have a mediocre, unadvertised match at the Manhattan Center. Uh, Bray gets a clean win, and that's pretty much it. Uh, this definitely felt lackluster and was not a great payoff for all this buildup. I mean, I'm sure that they'll have more matches in the future, but to me, this was pretty much a dud. So Elias decided to sing a song to Brooklyn, and most importantly, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Jimmy just had the weirdest look on his face every time they cut to him. It was like, it was between him trying to scowl and also hold back laughter at the same time. I don't know, go back and watch it though. It, it's a very fucking weird face. Uh, anyway, so John Cena comes out. And he says that he does have balls, because Elias told him he didn't. And Elias just ends up beating the piss out of him after a low blow. Um, I just want to say, I'm glad there's always someone on the roster with a guitar to smash over someone. Elias looks strong here, and I enjoyed this segment. Alright, so next, some uninteresting 
in my opinion, tag team stuff happened that ended with the Dudleys putting Heath Slater through a table. Shouldn't they have put someone through a table that's at, at least a heel? Like, I don't know. Uh, it was cool seeing the Dudleys again, but a complete throwaway segment for me. So, if you know me, you know that I've always loved DX ever since I started watching wrestling. So, seeing them all together again was great. Uh, Scott Hall looked great. Um, then we had the new era of Too Sweet come out and join forces with DX, uh, which led to a match <clears throat> with The Revival and Anderson and Gallows. And then everyone in DX just hitting their finishers on The Revival. Uh, overall, it was a pretty cool segment, even if it didn't really mean much or lead to anything. And to end the night, we had a confrontation between Braun Strowman, Kane, and Brock Lesnar. Uh, Lesnar looked dominant over Kane, while Strowman looked dominant over Lesnar. But Strowman looked dominant over Lesnar last time they had a title match, and uh, yeah, we all remember what happened there. Uh, I predict Kane will eat a pin from Lesnar at the Rumble, but Braun Strowman won't be finished with Lesnar. All right, well, that's all I've got for you this week, guys. Overall, I'd probably give the show about a 6 or 7 out of 10, uh, but I do just want to take a moment to mention a member of the crew that we lost this past week. Uh, Rex Christofferson was a great fan and a great friend. And uh, I always lit up whenever he'd call into the scoop because Rex would always make me laugh. And he was really passionate about wrestling and just a great guy all around. Uh, I'm going to miss you, man. And this episode is dedicated to you. And I'll see you when I get there, buddy.